Hello and welcome to Sports Talk Philadelphia. On this show we are going to recap the gutsy victory in London against the Jacksonville Jaguars for the Eagles and the 76ers current status on the fresh 2019 season. And there will be much more after this short intro. And welcome back. Don't be fooled, I'm not Josh Abrams. He is actually on the seven day disabled list after coming down <laughs> with a disease and will be back in the near future. But besides me, we have a great panel on desk, including Gia Lancy, Dave Roberts, and Selena B. Mack. To start, we are going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles and their great 24 to 18 win in London. With that, we saw really what was a tale of two halves, where in the first half, it, did not look good for Wentz, especially with a fumble and an interception on the first two plays. Um, they were down early, and then right at the end of the first half with the fumble and then the touchdown drive, it really looked like they t turned it around for what could hopefully be the season. They eventually wound up winning 24 to 18, Wentz threw for three touchdowns, and guys, what do you have to say about that? It was a good game. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It, was, it was just like, it was good to see them actually win and do something, you know. It's it's been a while, like since it's been since the Giants game that they actually, uh, you know, try to blow someone out the water. And I mean, it it wasn't a blowout, but you know, you actually saw the effort that they had in the Giants game. So. Right. It's nice to see. Yeah, I think there was a lot of great energy, especially being in London. I think it's just what they needed before going into the bye. I think everyone was so excited, so it was really great to see them get back out there and rebound with the win. Yeah, I think it was definitely a close game by far because the defense was really good for the Jaguars, but and at, in like the third quarter, I was getting a little bit nervous, but. Yeah. And you saw that especially in the third quarter with their defense, but. What I really thought really stood out was the defense in the fourth quarter. For the last eight minutes, they really shut down Blake Bortles in that offense, only giving them three points, where the team really had struggled in, throughout the whole season. Another area where they struggled was um, the running back core, of course. They have a committee of four running backs, and now it seems that it's become five. With Josh Adams emerging, having a pretty solid performance, only had nine touches, but they were for 61 yards, 6.8 on an average. So what do you guys think about that? Is he somebody that can save the running core? I mean, with Sproul still out with the hamstring injury, not knowing what's going on with that. Corey Clements not really been there for the Eagles. Obviously, Ajayi out now. Wendell Smallwood has been a good bright spot, but Josh Adams has really um, kind of picked it up the past few games, which was really surprising. But I think he's a great addition to the team because he's really showing what he can bring to the table. Definitely. Yeah, I think those two getting touches is uh, really good for our offense. Uh, I think we should start giving Josh Adams more touches than Smallwood because, I mean, we see with Smallwood he, what he can do. Uh, you can still see he, he, he can put up points, put up yards. But uh, I think Josh Adams, if we can get him in the rotation more, get him used to like everything that's going on in the offense, it will be really good for him. And it looks like he's going to be more of a receiving back because he had the little screen for a 25-yard touchdown in the game. But what, what, do you have anything to say on that, Gia? Yeah, I think Smallwood's really inconsistent. Um, and I think it's good that Josh Adams has been getting in there more. Um, and then Corey Clement, I, I think that he needs more touches to like prove himself, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So also going to that with the offensive depth, we have kind of breaking news here with the new acquisition for the Eagles, Golden Tate, coming in at the trade deadline the last couple of hours for any teams to acquire anyone. They will only be giving up a third round pick for that. And what do you guys think about that trade? I mean, I think everyone kind of knew um, around the trade deadline the Eagles were looking for a wide receiver. Like Deshaun Jackson, was floated, his name was floating around, Demarius Thomas. But it was kind of a surprise that they ended up with Golden Tate, I think, in sort of a bargain deal that they did. But it kind of proves what Howie Roseman can do as a GM. And I think Golden Tate brings a lot of depth to the Eagles receiving core now. Like, he'll make a great addition in there with Aguilar and Jeffries. Mm -hmm. I think he, he even said that he was surprised that he got that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think he's a good short-term player. I'm not sure if it was a good decision for the long run. Um, I think he's a good fit for the team. Like he has this really great attitude that he wants to fit in with the organization, and 
he doesn't care who the ball goes to. He just wants to win games, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, it was. It's it's like a weird addition because it's like. Like, cause we didn't like, like we needed somebody, but like uh, at the same time, I don't think we like needed Golden Tate. But I'm glad he's here because at least he can make plays. He can, he can make some plays while he's like here in Philly. I, it's weird because talking to people, it's kind of like they don't really know like if they feel good about the pickup or not. Like they feel like it could be like either really good for the team, like for this year, or it could just be something like that. We just like, all right, we give a third pick for someone who's not going to do much. So we'll see what happens in, when in the mm -hmm. end when all all of it tells, but. But it does look like a necessary risk to take. Yeah. It does, like, a third-round pick, you're not really giving up your future there. So I think it could bring in something great that could be a good deep ball threat. He's been on a winning team with the Seahawks the year before they won the Super Bowl, really when they were growing. So it could be great for these Eagles. Something I think that they it'll need. be a, sorry. I Go think ahead. it'll be a good um, push for Nelson Aguilar as well to yeah, definitely. maybe give him that just to step up his game. And even Jordan Matthews because uh, he had a solid game mm -hmm. where he actually caught the ball. Like, he had four mm -hmm. receptions. So, I mean – it's, I think it's going to be a good like, like mental thing for the rest of the receivers. Like, all right, I have to step up now to like, prove myself that, like, that we, like, we shouldn't bring someone in just like, to get things done. Like, I should do it myself. And it's also going to get some of the attention off him from the defenses for Aguilar and Matthews and mm -hmm. even Ertz, if you really think about it. Which, talking about Ertz, we'll get into some of our high points that came from the London game. Ertz caught another touchdown, and he's really been the reliable factor for these Eagles. He's one of the top leaders in receiving yards, he has 644 on the year, picked up his third touchdown in London, as I said. On pace to break record for the touchdown, tight end receptions, excuse me. What it, is there anything negative to say about this guy? He's just been dynamite, right? I think that Zach Ertz is really having a career season. This is what is going to get him that nice contract. And he's been having, like, while he's been having an awesome season, I think it's mostly due to him being able to stay healthy. Last year, he was a bit of a glass bones Greg, where he would get hurt every now and then. <laughs> and, like, he would be out for, like, two games at a time. But it really made a difference. But now he's kind of becoming, like, the Eagles all reliable and like really filling in that tight end role well. We, we in my household we say the Zacherts with the old catch and drop because he'll catch the ball for the first down and then he'll drop to the ground. <laughs> but um, but you can always count on him to get yeah. you that first down that you need. He is definitely the most reliable player the Eagles have on the offense oh, yeah. right now. Yeah, he's the type of guy that uh like I don't want to compare, but like when the Cowboys had Jason Witten, like it's kind of like that thing. Like yeah, you know, if right. you throw it to him, he's gonna get he's gonna do something, and that's kind of like what I want out of J uh, Zach Ertz. I want to say Jason Witten out of Zach Ertz. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the type of thing I want out of him, like for his career in, in Philly. So like, I mean, there's nothing you can say like anything bad about him. But, exactly. Like, Especially in a league where the tight end is almost not even used anymore. There's no yeah. big names anymore besides Kelsey Gronkowski, but. Even they haven't really been that productive. Another high point has been the defensive line. I mean, they've been something that hasn't really needed to be talked about because they've been reliable as well with Fletcher Cox or Chris Long getting pressure on, even though it was Blake Bortles this week, um, every week so far for all eight of them, they've been pretty stellar. What do you guys think? Uh, been been another, guy, another guy you really can't talk bad about is Fletcher Cox. I mean, he's, yeah. he's going he's gonna to make plays out there that, like, that a lot of people honestly in the league that can't like can't make those type of plays. Right. So I mean, uh, I'm just happy for him that I'd, like at least he's still like putting up good good numbers, still being productive out there. And even mm -hmm. having uh, Michael Bennett come up and replacing uh, Derek Barnett, he's actually making plays and actually like really starting to shine for the team right. than than he has before. Yeah, I definitely think that Fletcher Cox is that guy that quarterbacks fear when they see him heading over heading their way. Um, and yeah, Michael Bennett has been a, a bit of a surprise for me. I was a skeptical, I was skeptical of Michael Bennett when the Eagles first got him because of the whole controversy and everything. Right. But he's really kind of stepped into his role as an Eagle. Mm -hmm. And there's not been a lot of talk about him, but I think that's been a good thing in, yeah, in terms exactly. of who he is. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't be. Yeah. You have anything, Gio, to talk about? Um, I think that Michael Bennett is also a surprise, and mm -hmm. it's a shame that some of those plays have been reversed or called back. And yeah, and that's a whole other argument. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, and the third high point that we have for this has been Carson Wentz. He's been great so far. I, honestly, he's on pace to break rec the stats that he had last year. And coming off an ACL injury, missed the first couple of weeks. This is just unreal numbers. I don't think it could have been expected. I mean, it's kind of like well, it's kind of like when Adrian Peterson tore his ACL and then came yeah. back and almost broke the rushing record. It's not the same, but like it's also crazy to see that now in today's sports, in the sports world, where if you tear your ACL, you can be 
like a lot stronger. Like back in the day, if you did that, like your season, like your career is over. Oh yeah. But now, if you do that, you come back stronger, put up better numbers. You're a better athlete, and it, I think it's, it's the type of people, like the type of people that get hurt, like. Some of them, like, they, they can't do it, but, like, a player mm -hmm. like Carson Wentz, we kind of all figured, like, all right, he's the type to put in the work ethic and yeah. to the type to uh, really just go out there and grind. So he's the type to actually, like, put up consistent numbers. So, like, it's really amazing to see the stuff he's actually doing yeah, out there, knowing that he had that ACL injury. I saw, like, a really big change in this game with um, his quick releases. I, I know he had to adjust because of the defense, but... I think that he needs to keep up with that and stay really consistent with it, especially since if Lane Johnson's out and yeah. if Jason Peters is going to be out for some of <laughs> every game. So, Yeah, gee, I would completely agree with that. I'm like the one person in all of Philadelphia who is not completely sold on Carson Wentz, and I think he stays in the pocket too long and he's got too many turnovers. <laughs> and like, I, I think he's a great quarterback. I think he's this franchise. Like, He, he is the franchise, really. Mm -hmm. But I also think that he's got a lot of issues that people pretend to that don't exist and that yeah. they don't like to acknowledge because he's like our our Jesus or Ginger Jesus. <laughs> he is but, Ginger Jesus. Yeah. But yeah. there's there he he does make a lot of mistakes that right. need to be worked on. He consistently makes them, but he has been a bright spot. And I think getting Jordan Matthews back, that familiar connection there, right. has really mm -hmm. helped him as well. Chemistry is definitely there, but. That is an unpopular opinion you would be saying. Don't say that in the streets. <laughs> yeah. And now, of course, we have to look at our low points for the season. And starting with it is Jalen Mills. And honestly, the whole secondary together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not much to say about it without going on a rant. But do you have anything to add for that? Oh, oh the secondary. <laughs> um, the Green Goblin. I was a fan of Jalen Mills going to the season. And yes. I still think we should give him somewhat of a chance but I feel like he he gets beat on every play mm -hmm. like it's kind of ridiculous and it's but it's all across the secondary too like Ronald Darby and with Sidney Jones out and like with Rodney McLeod out these guys really need to kind of step up and fill in the gaps but they're right. not doing that Ronald Darby is so inconsistent he makes these awesome plays and then yeah. the next play he gets beat <laughs> so easy and you're like who yeah. are you and he celebrates at these big plays and I'm like you can't celebrate if you're so inconsistent yeah, the, exactly. the defensive backs give me a headache every week. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I look to Fletcher Cox. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's he actually gets me happy. Point. But, uh, yeah, Jalen Mills is, so, like, like Selena said, we were both excited, actually. We were both big Green Goblin fans. We always talked about how much we loved him. And then he just started making terrible plays. So, But then, he, like you, you said, he will celebrate, too, every time. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. great play. And it's right. like, what are you celebrating? You still kind of suck. Like, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I think my we, rant's I, over. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> and of course, some of the other negative points have been the run game and our kicker, Jake Elliott. But actually, now we're going to go to our picks since we don't have any game coming up this week, any projections. So we'll look at how we've done so far. And as in the league, we have Helen. We had a 6-2 and two record. And then you guys can try and find your names on there. I don't really, preferably like where I am right now. But <laughs> there's always the second half of the year to turn around. Yeah. You have anything to say about that? I should be 4-4 four and because four I knew they were going to beat the Jaguars, but <laughs> I had to put them down just in case they were going to lose. So that's all I, I mean. That's my, it. <laughs> yeah, my record up there is kind of interesting because I religiously, almost religiously pick against the Eagles. It's kind of a, not that I want them to lose, but it's a bit of a superstition at this I'm point. Totally that's exactly. the just yeah. has turned out to be true. Right. So. When, when last year, when they were going to the Super Bowl, I was like, they are not going to win. And like, <laughs> because I couldn't like say it because yeah. I knew it was, I was going to jinx it. So Can't admit to it. So we're going to be right back here at Sports Talk Philadelphia. When we return, we're going to be talking about the Sixers. Um, and we'll see you right after this commercial break. Thank you for tuning, tuning in with us. Tell me you didn't watch the Phillies game last night. You know, unfortunately I did, and it was just so heartbreaking to see the first day batter strike out. Paul Drew hasn't done anything for this organization. Uh, I'm, I'm confused. You're, you're doing an internship in, in sort of marketing and production, right? I really can't believe that Ben Simmons won't be dropping threes on the court this year. Hey, Tanya, I know you're really busy, but uh, could you tell me who the Sixers play on October 28th? Uh, doctor, in order for the Eagles to win this week, they're going to need 250 passing yards from Carson Wentz. We're going to need 100 yards rushing. I don't care who it is. Uh, we're going to need a lot of good production from our tight end and wide receivers. And I'm going to need five interceptions from uh, Malcolm Jenkins. Yeah. Mom, look, I, I know the money situation isn't good right now, but I am promise you Travis Konechny is going to have a breakout year. Hey, I had to climb to the top of Mount Everest to find Nick Pavetta's ERA. Sports Talk Philadelphia. 
We talk nothing but sports all the time. And our focus is now going to be on the Philadelphia 76ers. In their last three games since our last episode, they have been 2-1. and one. They topped Kemba Walker, Cardiac Kemba, and the Hornets along with, by two points only. And, but they also destroyed Trey Young's Hawks. But then in a game that's pretty pivotal for the East early, but still a top contender, it was the Toronto Raptors where they lost by 21. And I'll leave the floor to you guys right now. What do you have to feel about so far on the season? I got the biggest headache watching <laughs> this team. Um, they make me so nervous. Just I know it's early, but like, and I know every week I'm like, I'm not gonna be mad. I can't, it's hard because like, yeah. oh yeah. Well, I don't even know where to start. You can't beat a team like the Hornets by two. It no. just can't happen. The only good player on there is Cardiac Kemba. Yeah. And I mean, all right, you did what you did with the Hawks. That's fine. You got me a little excited. I was right. like, all right, we're that back where we need good. to be. Yeah. And then we play the Raptors, who are probably going to be the number one seed in the East. We don't really know. They're going to be top two at least. Still early, but yeah. Uh, they have Kawhi Leonard. We already know how good they're going to be. Um, so that's a, that's, that, that game should have been at least a two- to three-point game. But it, the way they played with all the turnovers mm -hmm. and just missed shots, it became a 20-point game. Because on paper, they really yeah. do match up head-to-head -head with it, where it's – Valanciunas yeah. against Embiid, or it's um, Covington should have been guarding Ka Kawhi much better than he did yeah, that yeah. night. But what do you have to yeah, say? Yeah, like we you the turnovers. Oh my gosh, that gives me a headache too. <laughs> I think Ben Simmons had like 11 turnovers mm -hmm. against the yeah. Raptors, and that's absolutely unacceptable. And I know we're we're kind of riding this train of Ben Simmons not doing that well and like we're not really used to it from mm -hmm. what we've seen from him but it's kind of like unnerving to see that this is what they become they're kind of like this middle of the road team now so they're like at 500 now and nobody knows like, are the Sixers actually going to be as good as we yeah. thought they were or <laughs> are they just going to be that team be that team like the Clippers a couple years ago where they make the playoffs but they're never actually going to go yeah. anywhere yeah and the biggest point that we do have to look at it is their difference from home to away games and if you're going to be a successful team, especially come the playoffs, you need to win on the road. And they haven't even done that once yet. 4-0 at home, they've defended their home court very well here in Philadelphia, but 0-4 on the road, as I said. How big of a factor is that going down the road this season? I mean, if you can't win a, if you can't win a road game, it's like, I mean, there's not much to do. Like, as soon as you get in the playoffs, you have to play half the games not at home, and you have yeah. to be prepared to win somewhere else. So mm -hmm. we have to get in the mindset of, all right, we, we know we can win at home. We can be really good at home. We just have to get in the mindset of, all right, let's win in someone else's house and let's, like, let's make that our house. Like, yeah. Let's take over their building. Let's, let, let's get the fans that are there for us to like, cheer for us when everything's quiet. Right. Like, right. That's how it has to be. But still at home games, I think they still get booed. So I don't know how can <laughs> they just I, turn I it can, around yeah. and use that at away games as well. Yeah. I actually saw that there are some tickets on sale for tonight's game for like $6 yeah. because people aren't showing up because they're going to be inconsistent. People know mm -hmm. that they're going to be inconsistent. They don't know what to expect. And especially if they keep playing the way that they are now, they're not going to get that high seed to even have home court advantage through the yeah, series. No. So that's another thing we really have to take into consideration. Um, moving on, we're going to talk about Simmons' struggles. And as we said it briefly here before, let's really look in depth at it. He hasn't been the player that he was last year or the player that he was hyped to be for his whole career. Yeah, like the whole thing, Ben Simmons with his shot, everybody was like, oh, we haven't seen him all summer. Maybe he's working on his shot. You know what I mean? And then it's Markel Fultz obviously has been working yeah. on his, but mm -hmm. Simmons kind of just fell flat. And he's not being the same guy he was last year either. Uh, you can see uh, in these games, if he doesn't score more than – he's averaging 15, but like he – if you if he doesn't actually like make 15 points, then we're probably going to lose by at least 10 yeah. or like at least 5. He has to be, he's the type of player that he has to at least put up 20 points for us to like, even feel comfortable to, like, yeah. to win. It, the last couple of games has been like, all right, 11 points, 10 points, um, like 12 points. He's try, like, he, like you can see he's still trying to get mm. points. And he can, you can see he's also putting up great numbers everywhere else and like assists and rebounds. But like, if we want to win and feel comfortable winning, he has to put up at least 20 points. And it seems like his confidence isn't there. And obviously it's going to go even lower every week. But it just seems like him and Markel, Markel don't want to shoot the ball. So. Yeah, and that's exactly the point I was just going to make is Simmons needs to become more selfish. He's averaging eight assists per game. The ball is always in his hands, and he's one of the best drivers in the game, I yeah, would say, right yeah. now, and he's mm -hmm. not doing that at all. And when they're losing these margins by 20 points or they're giving up as many points as they are on defense, it's tough to win without your 
second best or best player, depending on who you like better, to be scoring 15 points a game. Now to move on is another starter that has been somewhat of a struggle back and forth, another inconsistent factor is Covington. Is he good? Here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we, we're fans of Rocco. We like him. You know, he has definitely, for being an undrafted player, and he came mm. to the Sixers last year, he's definitely blown everything out of the water for them. And like a couple months ago, like the like before the season started, he was named to like the NBA top 50 list, oh, yeah. and that was like kind of ridiculous and incredible at the same time. And now it's like, where's the consistency? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, where's the Robert Covington we knew last year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, me and Selena have many conversations about how we love <laughs> Robert Covington, and then we'll come in the next day and talk about how much we hate him. <laughs> um, it's, it really is a, it's, it's just like, we can see how good of a player he can be and what he can do, but like, it's just the fact that in games, it's just like, like, where is, like, where did it go? Like, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. he'll do a great play, and then the next, the next play, he'll do something really stupid. Yeah. It's kind of like, I don't want to say he's the Jalen Mills of the Sixers, but he's, like, the Jalen Mills of the Sixers. Like, it's really... All he needs to do is dye his hair green. green. Yeah, like, if he dyed his hair green, it would look like he, he just came <laughs> off the field out of nowhere care and just played. Exactly. I think he... I have never been a fan. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's okay. But I just think he is so inconsistent, and his bad plays are so bad, yeah. you know? And if you look at the stats, though, and you can't really tell if this credits him or the poor play of the Sixers all around, he, is aver he has the best three-point field goal percentage on the team. He's leading the team in steals, and he's second behind um, Embiid in blocks. And I can't, as exactly as I said, I can't tell if that's good or bad. I can't tell if that's because Covington's really becoming who he should be or if it's because the team has been slacking around mm -hmm. him. You know, I have a theory on the Sixers' struggles. I'm just going to put it out there. Brett Brown's beard. <laughs> it's the curse. It's the curse of the beard. That's that's it. That's all I'm gonna say. If we're gonna talk theories. My theory is that Ben Simmons went out with the Kardashian, and now he has the <laughs> Kardashian curse for at least three months. He dated for it's not dated wrong. for three months. Right. So at least three months he well, has to we'll be back. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see when uh, January comes yeah. around. And we'll see. Hopefully, eventually, when it's coming up here as we have the schedule. Which, what do you guys think about this? Who their upcoming matchups are? As they have the Pistons coming up tonight, and Nets, Pacers, Hornets, and Hornets they've already played before. Not the most dominant list in the league as they could have, but what do you guys think? What do they need to do in this next stretch? I think uh, the key is to keep winning those home games. The Pistons are at home, and then they hit the road again um, for the Nets. And the Nets, uh, obviously a divisional team, that's, that bears a little bit more weight. Right. Um, but can consistently keep winning at home and then try to pick up those road wins along the way because right. they're already slacking in that area. Right. Get into that like mentality like, all right, we need to carry this over with us. Yeah, I think we definitely need to win um, at home first and then try to get those road wins. Uh, I think since we're playing the Pistons again, mm -hmm. uh, we can't let Blake Griffin get 50 points again. Yeah, again. <laughs> it can't happen. I think that was a great that. game, though. Yeah, it was a good game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, Back you know, Blake Griffin yeah. had 50 points. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I feel like if we just get Ws down the line, we should be fine. But right. It all depends on our play. Right. And this is a stretch that you really have to win. Um, what do you guys think of the East coming up? What do you think that could be, how they could be coming out? Oh. I mean, the Celtics. Yeah. <laughs> I, it sucks because I, we hate the Celtics, yeah. but, like, why right. is Tatum on the, on the Boston? <laughs> Leading the team in yeah. scoring, which is surprising. And why did we draft up? Fultz yeah. instead? Yeah. So. And going on, it's also like looking at the Raptors in the game we just played. It's like, all right, if they're doing that now and they can also put up a good game against the Celtics, it's kind of like what, like what, what are we actually bringing to the table, like, coming near, like, when we get near the end, like, what are we actually going to be at right. that time? So. It's scary. <laughs> and now before we wrap up here, um, we are going to go with our stars of the month of October as Halloween was yesterday. So for mine first, I'm going to be going with the quarterback, Carson Wentz. Wentz, I think, has been great these past four weeks and since he's returned from the injury, having 1,184 passing yards, 10 touchdowns, and four turnovers, which three of them are fumbles, which is more head scratching than anything else, I would say. But I think he has been the catalyst for this team that has stayed consistent, has worked with when there's been nobody around him rather than all of his factors coming along with this offense. And I think hopefully they'll start clicking soon and I think his play will stay as consistent as it has been. Who um, go next? I pick <laughs> Zach Ertz um, for the standout of the month. Right now he is the best tight end in the NFL with 61 oh, receptions yeah. and 644 receiving yards. 
All of his touchdowns have coincidentally been in the month of October. Um, <laughs> he uh, has tremendous chemistry with Carson, and their timing right. is almost perfect. Um, he's also a blocking tight end, which is like amazing. Unheard of in the league. <laughs> right, yeah. and um, he's able to adjust to whatever the offense needs him to do, which mm -hmm. is amazing and what we need right now. And now we have two of the same here, as we just got done with Sixers <laughs> talk. Let's take it away with the Embiid talk. Uh, of course. Uh, talk Joel. about uh, Joel Embiid. Uh, he's the best player on the team. And it's weird because he's a center, but uh, he's getting stuff done. You can see it says 27 points per game. Uh, it should say 30, but he only had one bad game was <laughs> against the Hawks. And that game, Ben Simmons had 20 points. So right. my argument comes back. But yeah, Ben, or not Ben, Joel Embiid has been playing <laughs> Very great. It's only been a couple of games, but like he's been putting up 30 points per right. game because he has to. So yeah. more power to you. <laughs> this Joel Embiid is like unlike Ben Simmons a lot of the time and even Ronco. Joel Embiid is a guy that comes into every single game with everything that he's got and he lays it all out there on the court. And that's the type of guy you want to lead your team. And that's what he is for the Sixers, like 27 points per game. That's crazy compared to his like career stats overall. Yeah, I right. think that's like over th three points more than his career stats. Like like you were saying, like he's got like half of the games this season, he's had 30 or more points. Right. Like that's the type of guy you want to lead your team, and that's Joel Embiid. That's why we love him. Are you? We love JoJo. Yeah. We love JoJo. Are you guys surprised that he has been talked about more in the MVP talks? The I actually am. I think he's at top five at the very least right. in the league right now. As a Sixers fan, I'm surprised, and as an NBA fan, I'm not surprised because I know the type of players they're going to try to put out to be the MVP. They're going to talk right. about LeBron. They're going to talk about Giannis because Kobe talked to him over the summer and all that yeah. stuff. They're going to talk about <laughs> Anthony Davis. Right. They're going to talk about other guys that are like, all right, they're good. They're really good players and like all that, but like they don't want to talk about a guy like Joel Embiid, maybe because of the way he talks, maybe because he's on the Sixers. Right. You know, there's a lot of things that could it could be, <laughs> but like I'm not I'm not surprised. Right. <laughs> Well, after a great segment here, that's going to wrap it up for this week's edition of Sports Talk Philadelphia. We thank you all for joining us. Make sure to follow us on social media at lasalle.edu slash TV. And we hope you have a great week. And let's go birds and let's go Sixers.